Hello everybody, Gregor Artero here, and today I would like to talk about surface area and topology. And I've talked about topology before, and topology is the surface area of geometry. And a lot of people are focused on the volume of geometry, which has to do with space. The well, surface area, or topology, deals with all the dimensions, but it's a different way to look at geometry. And so, a lot of the geometry I do um, in the math geometrically, I call first dimensional topology, and it's working with circles. It's working with the simplest form of geometry and how they relate to each other. And when you see a circle, you usually imagine the inside area of the circle and uh, the, the volume of it. Um, but the relevant information is the surface, it's the boundary layer. Because when you create a circle, you create a boundary layer between the finite and the infinite. The finite's on the inside, the infinite is on the outside. And so all we're dealing with is boundary layers. So, how I want to relate this to a torus is, a torus is a boundary layer between um, the interior of second dimensional information and the exterior of second dimensional information. And the torus, to me, represents the basic geometry of the second dimension, electromagnetism. And it's a uh, fractalized version of two circles interacting with each other, two pieces of first dimensional topology interacting to create second dimensional topo topology. Now, how Tesla understood this um, is he was working with electromagnetism and the geometry that best replicated it is the torus, the tube torus. However, he also understood that to increase capacitance, you want to increase surface area, as much surface area as possible. And so, one of the designs he used um, is this concept right here. This is from the book. I have the book, my friend's borrowing my Atlantis and the Power System of the Gods. And you see the top of the tower has all these little spheres. I couldn't find a better image of this, but it's talked about how to increase surface area on a tube torus, Tesla would put half spheres around it. And you could also dimple them inwards like a golf ball. Um, what they recently discovered a few years ago is that if you dimple a plane like a golf ball, um, they, are, they can decrease the fuel mileage for jet liners by 40%. Because each of these little dimples, you also imagine you can put like a, a, vort a vortice in and it's it's also like when on a plane, you um, or uh, people delivering packages, uh, if they have a little uh, cart thing going from the truck off of the truck, there's all these little rollers. Then you throw the package on and it goes down the rollers. It's the same concept with the plane. Um, and but you're creating surface area that uh, mitigates drag because we have a nice smooth surface. You create all this drag. You create vacuum along the surface. And so you want to try and create geometry that works with uh, the atmosphere, with vortexes. And when you do that, you can facilitate flow more effectively. Now, uh, what I've done with these torses is figure out the geometry um, to increase the surface area, but to facilitate particular flow. And I'm taking the simplest form of geometry. And so when I'm working with first dimensional topology, such as circles, I'm working with the simplest construct of how to create a boundary between the infinite and the finite. And as I usually say, the simplest answer is usually the best. And so we're working with inherent properties of nature, Sim the simplest aspects of geometry. And it's the only way nature will work, because it's all really simple. It's just the simplicity becomes more complex. So just when I was saying a tube torus, it's a complexity of the circle. And then when you get in this 3D space, you're getting a complexity of the tube torus. But it all starts with simplicity with the circle. Now, with the rotating coil, the rotating coil doesn't focus on surface area. The rotating coil focuses on um, the electrical properties um, that we usually focus with an inductor. However, being it's an inductor, we're only working with the magnetic aspects of the coil when you're wrapping a coil. So, here's a 
traditional image of a rodent coil. Um, and so with the, the two spacing lines. And we're not dealing with the surface area in it. It's not a concept people talk about. They just talk about the pathways. And the pathways, when we wind the pathways, we're dealing mostly exclusively with magnetism. And we want to start to work with both the electric and magnetic aspect, aspects you're working with electromagnetism. And to do that requires uh, structuring the geometry of the wire. And so, um, one, one of the concepts with making magnets is they say not to use, or electromagnets, they, um, not to use braided wire because it can create hysteresis. It can create, each little wire starts to create its own little form of magnetic field and you start to get a distorted magnetic field. Well, there's a reason that's happening and there's a reason you want to take advantage of that effect. Hysteresis is actually a beneficial property if you understand how you use it. There are eddy currents. You're creating eddy currents in the material. You want to control those eddy currents. Just like when I was talking about dimpling the aircraft, you're creating eddy currents, but now let's start to control those eddy currents. When you put those eddy currents into use, instead of saying, oh, it's a waste of energy, but it actually can become a beneficial aspect of the system, you can do that with geometry. And so, this was a primary concept Tesla understood with increasing the surface area to increase the capacitance, to increase the boundary layer between the infinite and the finite, between your polarities. Um, they take advantage of this concept with the new supercapacitors that are being developed. And they use a, uh, two plates, um, uh, like, like a regular capacitor and insulator, but on one of those plates between the insulator and the plate is carbon. And they take uh, activated carbon and they uh, put uh, electrolyte into it. And what they're doing is they're increasing the surface area of the charge to interact with the other plate, allowing for massive amounts more storage. And so we need to take this concept and apply it to electromagnetics, but include the geometry. When we include the geometry, you can start to harness the eddy currents the way that they're supposed to move and you start to create a holistic system of flow. And so that's one of the things I'm working on. The top of my tower, I've not used a tube torus at the moment. I'm just using fins because we easily replicate um, a grassroots aspect. And I'm trying to understand the math and the geometry for how a triple helix interacts with the tube torus because there's linear and cyclical forms of helixes. And these helixes as I've stated before, the simplest dynamics of a helix. And so if you take three tubes and twist them together, you have a triple helix. And it's basically three circles spinning around each other. So when you're actually looking at crop circles, people think they're 2D geometry, but in the simplest sense, you're actually looking at the simplest form of geometry. You're looking at first dimensional topology. Not all the crop circles, but a good amount of them are first dimensional topology. And it's the first dimension is the basic dimension of existence. You have the zeroth dimension, which is the dot. There's not much information in it. It's a point in space. There's two vectors, in and out, black hole and a white hole, um, into the infinite and out of the infinite to a finite um, state of existence. And only can those um, holes then relate to themselves to create circles. And a circle is basically this point in rotation, in torque. And the farther the point gets from its center of axis, the greater energy this um, aspect of the zeroth dimension has. And so when you're putting these points into rotation, you can start to see how these points relate to each other. And that's first dimensional topology in the simplest sense. Is it's the base level of relationship between um, the boundary layer aspect between the first, uh, between the infinite dimension, or it's not the infinite non-dimension, and then the dimensional reality. So that's the little lesson for today. And uh, surface area is something to think, think about much more. And it relates to boundary layers and how boundary layers are a fundamental aspect of our reality. Most of society lives on the coast. 
Um, 50 percent of the world lives within 50 miles of the coastline. And the coastline is a boundary layer between the ocean and land. We also live on the boundary layer of earth and sky. Um, when you're interacting with me right now, you're seeing the boundary layer of my physical self and my external self. And so everything we interact with are boundary layers. They're one of the most fundamental aspects within, within reality. Uh, a book I've talked about on my channel before is Meta Patterns by Professor Volk of, uh, I think, the University of New York. Um, he's an associate professor of biology, and he talks about fundamental aspects in reality, and one of the ones he stresses most is boundary layers, and it's a pattern he sees all throughout um, uh, our reality, and that through understanding these basic meta-patterns, we can start to really understand the core of science. So, thank you, and uh, you all have a good one. Bye.